Welcome back, everybody. Alex Baker. I'm Frank Trigg. Today, we're going to talk to my long-term friend, one of my, well, I was his training partner more than he was my training partner. I always was taking a butt kick in Kenny Monday. <laughs> um, I had Chael Sonnen on here a little bit ago. He was one of the commentators yeah. for, for Battlegrounds. Yeah. And we spent 35 minutes talking about the World Championships for wrestling. Really? We, wow. it's, it's, we're still both really involved in it. We still watch as much as we can. We got to flow wrestling and watch it. You know, we try to catch all the matches when they're around. Right. Are you still that vested you know in watching international competition like you used to be yeah absolutely i definitely keep up i definitely keep uh keep abreast of what's going on um you know i was when i was at oklahoma state i worked a lot with coleman scott mm -hmm. you know and chris you know with the oklahoma state team of course but coleman scott going into the 2012 olympic games i was you know i was one of his main coaches and so uh got to got to work with the 2012 team before uh before london and so that was that was a lot of fun uh, but you know, now my job has changed. I haven't been able to, to work with the guys as much, but I follow it, watched it, stayed up, you know, till four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. Let's, let's talk, that. let's talk about Jordan Burroughs. How for real yeah. is he? I know he lost, he lost this year, but I mean, he's, yeah. he's, a, he's the best American guy that we've had in a very long time. Right, is right, he going to be right. bounced back? Is it, is it one of those things where now people finally figure out his style and it's going to start to start to come off for him or, you know, no, I, I think, I think Jordan bounced back. You know, if you watch the guy and I've, I've watched it, you know, for several years now, and he's, uh, you know, he's he's the face of USA Wrestling, and he does a great job. He's got a great, great mindset toward the sport. Yeah. You know, he doesn't, um, you know, he doesn't get too too high, too low. He's he's pretty even keel. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the guy's a winner. The guy's a winner. I mean, I, I've seen it time and time again where he's gotten in, in in tough situations and just toughed his way out. You know. Yeah. Um, no, I think he's I think he's a professional guy. I think he's. Uh, He's definitely one of the best we've we've had uh, as far as just winning. Uh, I think he's the kind of guy that, that has per, kind of perfected his his style. Of course, I, I think he can do more. You know, of course, as the world catches up, yeah. I think you've got to do more. You got to continue to change. I think he's got to do more upper body techniques, mm -hmm. uh, a little better leg defense. But uh, he's he's still got some growing to do, man. He's still still a young young guy. And uh, but no, I think he'll be back bigger and stronger. I think that, you know, you know, it's just tough to, to, to keep that streak going, man. It's tough to win. You know, it is. What about the uh, the Russian at, I think it was 85 kilos, that tech followed his way through the entire tournament, <laughs> and he's like he's like 14 years old or something? I mean, he's, he's, amazing. A, he's, a, he's a junior in high school, a junior or senior in high school. The kids, it's you know, amazing. You know, and it's amazing because I was, back when I was coaching in Texas, we took teams to Dagestan, mm -hmm. and uh, the head coach of Russia now was there. And, uh, and and these guys are little young guys, and it's, it's, it's their, their club team there. And I did a camp. I did a clinic. Not a camp, but a clinic while we were there for three days. I uh, did like a two-hour session. And I was showing, you know, my outside carry I, I do. Yeah. So I'm doing that outside carry. And so he was, like, intrigued by it, you know, because it was just it was something different, right? And um, now I've seen these guys are hitting it. I mean, that, that, that guy, you know, that's, that's one of his main moves, you know. And I, it's just funny. I showed that. Back when we were in Dagestan, there are, I talked to Sergey Belaglazov a little while ago in LA, and oh, yeah? they still do the same system over there. Even though the Soviet Union is broken apart, and when right. we were coming up, when you were winning the Olympic Games and winning World Championships, right. it was it was always Russia versus the U.S. It was always the Bear versus the Eagle. That was always right. every right. poster was out there. They right. still have the same system that even though it's it's no longer the USSR, where one coach has an athlete all the way through till he retires. Right. And it's like it's you know it's like you always see Jordan Burroughs talking about earlier. Uh, uh, Manning is always in the corner. That's his coach yeah. from, from college. Yeah. He's his coach now. He's, he's always carries through. Right. With us, right. we tend to switch. We tend to move. We have our high school coach. We go into college. We have a different college right. coach. Both systems seem to work well because both systems are still at the top of the food chain. Yeah. Which system do you think is better? Being with one coach your entire career, and he develops you and pushes you and trains you, or bouncing around and having diff different coaches? You know, I, I think it's um, to have one coach. I think you, you you get that consistency. You know your guy. Of course, now as a coach, you know the better I know my athlete, the better I can coach him. You know, and I never quite had that coming through. You know, we kind of coached each other. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was uh, we were at Oklahoma State. And, you know, Joe was doing his thing, trying to um, you know win titles at NC. I mean, at, at Oklahoma State. So I never really had a, 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 a consistent freestyle coach. Right. But we had each other. We had, you know, Kevin. I had Melvin. I had Chris Campbell. I had um, John. 
And so we kind of coached each other. You know, when Schultz had Schultz, Schultz era, we kind of coached each other through it. And, um, and so that's kind of how we did. But I think, yeah, I think going forward, if I could have an athlete and I could stay with him the whole time, that's a better system for sure. For the folks at home, you know, he's mentioning names because we know we've known each other for years. I've known right. I've known Kenny since 1990, and so he right. says, "Guy, oh, I had Melvin. He means Melvin Douglas." He had, when he says right. Kevin, he means Kevin Jackson. When right. He says John, he means John Smith. Right. You're talking about and Dave Schultz. Like, you're talking about guys that are that are the the epitome, the the what got, what wrestlers look at today. Right. Are looking at these legends, and this is the guys that that I got to work out with every day. And, and right. Kenny was like, "Hey, Melvin, what are you doing?" We're gonna, I'm coming in for two weeks to train. Or, uh, uh, Kevin, where are we going? We're going to go here. We're going to Iowa State. Like, we're going to go. Like, it was this whole right. game was being played. We right. said we coached right. each other. We really did yeah, coach each sure. other. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we else. We'd, have, we'd have training camps. And, of course, you know, and, uh, Chris Campbell would come in. And yeah. uh, Melvin would come in. And, uh, and those guys would come in. So we just kind of coached each other through it, man. But you don't have that anymore uh, like, they, like we had back in the day. But of course, all those guys were legends. You know, we're legend, legendary guys. Uh, so that, that was to our benefit. But yeah, if I if I could have one guy, and if I could have Coleman Scott, and just like coach him from tw- between now until he retires, I can promise you that guy won a gold medal. Well, speaking of coaching, you're out of Florida, back in Texas. Yep. Basically back home uh, in Dallas with Team Takedown. Yeah. I mean, how did this come about? Like, what happened? I mean, because I, I didn't I didn't know that you wanted to come back home. So what, I don't think you called anybody and said, "Hey, I'm looking for a job to come back come back towards the center of the country." So. Who made the first phone call? How did that first conversation go? Well, you know what? Uh, when, when that happened at Florida, when, uh, when those guys released me at, uh, from the Black Zillions, mm-hmm. you know, I, I wasn't really looking to uh, come, come back to Texas. You know, just kind of you're out there. And uh, I knew that, that I'd get some calls. You know, I had, you know, several calls from different camps and that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, but I knew Johnny. You know, I knew Johnny from way back. You know, he's, he's a cowboy. I knew Jay, I mean, uh, Jed, Rochelle, and, um, but I, I, I know, I knew Ted back when I was at Texas before, when he was coaching a club team mm-hmm. and I was coaching team Monday, a club wrestling team. Yep. And so we knew each other. Um, and so when they found out that, uh, that I was available, um, one of the other owners got a hold of, uh, uh Steve, Steve Silver mm-hmm. got a hold of Ted and, um, and, uh, he gave me a call and said, would I, would I have an interest in coming out and checking out the team and uh, looking at a possibility of coming being the wrestling coach because they didn't have a wrestling coach at the time. And so uh, they flew me out for a couple of weeks and uh, kind of met with the team, met the coaches, and, um, and kind of decided to go forward. Will you ever look to go back towards the college ranks? I mean, I knew you coached at Oklahoma State for a while, and, and would you like to go back and be a head coach of a major program? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't close that door, Frank. You know, I got two, two sons that are wrestling now. Yeah. And it uh, looks like they're going to be wrestling for, for a while. I've got, a, <laughs> I I got my one. <laughs> I know, right? My son Kennedy is a junior. Oh. And okay. um, starting to get some calls from colleges. It's funny. Kevin Jackson called him the other day, you know, nice. uh, about, about going to Iowa State. So, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's coming full circle. And then I've got a, uh, my youngest son, Quincy, is a freshman in high school. Mm-hmm. And he's wrestling. And so, um, you know, I wouldn't close the door. I wouldn't close the door. I mean, I love college wrestling, of course. Um, it just kind of happened. This opportunity just kind of presented itself. And um, I think it's great for me to, to get out and spread my wings a little bit. And I love, I love the MMA game. I love it, you know. And, um, and I always knew that I kind of come back to it. And yeah. I've, I've trained some guys, you know, and, uh, previously. Uh, but I wouldn't close that door on going back to college wrestling. But some of Battlegrounds MMA, this is your promotion – you bring yeah. that eight-man tournament. It's it, it, at first, but kind of like I was like, ah, it's just going to be some nobodies from no anywhereville. It's going to be some small name guys, right. and all of a sudden you started getting some names started popping out of who's going to be in this tournament. Right. And, you know, we get like Cody McKenzie, we got Ronald Canario, uh, Jesse Taylor, Marcus Sanchez, Brock Larson, just to name a few of them. Right. These are some real name fighters. These are guys that that have got histories of fighting and and you know really want to go back to the old school rule of of let's see how many times you can fight tonight and try to put this thing together. Right. Right. How hard was it to make this thing actually come together and make it make it a fruition that this is actually going to happen now? You know, it's it's been uh, it's been easier than we thought. You know, when we first started talking about the concept and, and doing it, you know, I wasn't I wasn't totally on board because it wasn't you know you, you didn't see it. You know, no one's doing it, and so as an upstart promotion, I'm like, man, why would we want to jump out there and take a risk uh, with with this type of format? 
but you know, my partner Bryant, you know, he, you know, he kept talking about it, and and I said, well, let's just uh, let's start interviewing people, and so we start throwing it out there, talking to fighters, you know, talking to trainers, talking to coaches, talking to promoters, and 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 we always got positive feedback. Everybody's, oh man, that was I love the tournament format. I love yeah. you know, I love it, you know, and I wish someone would do it, you know, and so we never we didn't get an overwhelming negative response about it. Uh, and so we just kind of start kicking, kicking around and doing our work behind it and doing our homework and, and really, you know, checking out the, 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 the medical, uh, situation, how, how we could get it past the commission, how, how we can get the commission to, to, uh, approve it. Um, and so we went back and, uh, and did our homework, do, I did, I do, I do diligence as far as how, how we're going to protect the athletes going forward in a tournament format and um, it kind of kind of came together you know kind of came together and so I, I think uh, it's exciting there's a lot of eyes on us about it um, but but the fighters and I still get fighters calling me about wanting to uh, wanting to get in the tournament so oh. I think going forward man if we if we hit this thing it's a home run and and guys get through the tournament without major injuries and and you see the best guys fight in finals then I think it's going to be um, I think it's going to be a great deal. Yeah, there's, uh, all of us have started, you know, right way back. We all the tournaments. That's how I started. You know, I was fighting, you know, three, four, five times a night. Really? For for four for four bucks. I drove down from, uh, <laughs> from Oklahoma State all the way down to uh, uh, to uh, um, Dallas, Texas. As a matter of fact, right, my right. First set. I think I remember that. Yeah, went over to Amarillo, driving over to Amarillo when I was, when yep. I was in Norman. I mean, it was crazy the amount of times I had to drive around. Right, I was getting right. a couple, was getting a couple hundred bucks if you won. If you didn't win, you got nothing. Right. It was one of those deals. Do these guys get every round that they're in? They're getting paid something, and then of yeah. course the, the one line sure goes to the champ at the end. Yep, yep, okay. yep. You get uh, they get a they get a, a purse, you know, two grand a fight, and then um, of course when you get to the finals, if you if you win the finals, you get the the, the remainder forty six thousand uh, wow. for the purse, which you know that that's always an incentive. You know, you put you put that that purse on the on the line. That's always an, an incentive to get fighters. I'm telling you, I've got people calling me. Some big names that said, "Hey, if you ever get that thing up a little, little higher, I'll be interested." Yeah, that's good. So now, my my question is: Say a guy wins, whatever, but he's yeah. hurt or can't continue to do a cut or whatever. Do you have an alternate then that jumps in, or do you have somebody else, or do you have to bring the loser back in? Like, how's that going to happen? Yeah, yeah, the loser gets back in, but but we had alternates as well. Okay. We had alternates as well that'll step in, and if the guy can't continue, um, but yeah, but. Um, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good format. It's a good format. We got some good guys on on standby. They're biting at the bits to get in that tournament. So, you know, uh, I don't really see a, a downside to this, to be honest with you, because there's right. if you get these guys through without getting hurt, like you said, right. everybody's gonna want to do it again. Everybody's gonna want to try and bring this back in again. It's the basic, basic thing is fighter safety is the problem. That's right. That's is right. the guy safe? Can he keep doing? It? You know, because you know, we're just we're, we don't care. Uh, my my arm is falling off, but I got to fight. It's okay. I'm gonna keep fighting. So exactly, it's and it's really what's awesome. interesting, Frank, is is how the the, the tactics and the strategies yeah. that the fighters and the and the, and the trainers have got to, the team's got to come up with. You know, are they going to hold back? You know, are they going to kind of try to pace themselves through the through the early rounds just to try to you know avoid getting injured, or are they going to go all out? You know, to try to try to get to the next round. You know, so it's interesting, it's interesting to see how how these guys will strategically try to try to get these early rounds through. You know, but Again, it's all about the fighters. You know, it's all about trying to take care of the fighters and giving these guys an opportunity to build their names, build their brands. You know, so after the first, you know, the rounds, you know, we're going to be we're going to be on them. We're going to be hydrating them. We're going to make sure that those guys are piecing them back together so we can yeah. put them back in the cage. You know, so uh, but we we really have done our homework as far as trying to take care of these guys and make sure they're safe uh, before they go back out. You know, we're not going to take any chances on. Um, Getting these guys injured. How much time in between fights for these guys? Thirty minutes. Oh, okay. oh, so it's just it's a wrestling match with punches. Yeah, I mean, thirty, you 30 minutes, man. You put together a wrestling tournament. Exactly, and yeah, we're yeah. we're turn we're a country of tournaments. You know, yeah. we are. You know, I grew up. You grew up in tournament format, and that's how I honed my skills. That's how I become great. Mm -hmm. um, football, and, and we football, love tournaments. You know, we we love it. You know, from the final final four, you know, to the football playoffs, yeah. to now the you know the basketball. I mean, football is going to have a, a tournament format now. Mm -hmm. So we are a country of tournaments, and people relate to tournaments, you know, how they can get behind a guy. And that's going to be interesting as well to see how the fans get behind a certain certain yeah. fighter and stay with him, 
You know, stay with him. You know, he may have a, an upset early. He's going to build a fan base. Yeah, you know, yeah, it, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so he's going to come back and he's going to have fans cheering for him. And, you know, it's going to be exciting, man. I'm telling you, because it's, you know, it's going to always have an upset somewhere. You know, it's going to always be someone that, that, that is not supposed to win, is not favored to win. He'll win. Yeah. You know, so it'll be interesting to see how, how he gets through it. Well, Kenny, thanks for coming on here. Enemy Oddsbreakers. Great to finally catch up with you. I know it's been far too long. Um, I'm so glad and happy that you're still out there coaching and you, and you finally got to. You're kind of back home, a little bit close, only about four. Yeah, yeah, close. closer back home. But I'm still in the game, still doing what I love. I love to coach. I love to teach. Yeah, I love to. I love to build champions. You know that. If I'm if I'm in a circle where we're trying to win, you know that. Yeah. I'm always trying to build champions. You know, so uh, it's good to see you, man. I, I haven't seen you in a long time in person, so I'm we looking forward to seeing you. I was trying to get out for this weekend for this weekend's fight. I just, I just can't that'd be make great. It that'd be great, man. That's my hometown. Yeah, it's Tulsa. You know, so we we have, we had to get around and uh, catch up a little bit. Perfect. All right, Kenny. Appreciate it, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, man. Take care.